Hey everybody, welcome to Life is Brutiful, and today we're going to be having a little bit of Halloween fun because we are going to be brewing a pumpkin pie New England style IPA. But not just any pumpkin pie New England style IPA, but we're going to be throwing in all the spices and cinnamon and nutmeg and whatnot that you want out of it, but we're also going to be throwing in a lot of rye. So it's a pumpkin pie New England style rye IPA. God, that's a mouthful. Now the recipe for this bad boy is pretty interesting. It's drastically different than other Nipahs I've done in the past. We start off with a lot of organic pumpkin puree. This is the high quality good stuff. No preservatives, no chemicals, just pure pasteurized pumpkin puree. Our hop bill is pretty fun too. The majority of it is going to be Simcoe. We're also going to really try to accentuate the flavor profile with a good amount of citra and kind of bringing it back to the traditional pumpkin beer-esque flavor with a little bit of spicy kick. We're throwing in some German spalt. We're also going to be using a lot of flaked rye and flaked barley instead of flaked wheat, which is what I usually use in my typical Nipa recipes. This still is going to give me the same hazy results that I'm expecting out of my flaked malts, but it's going to give it a little bit more of that rye flavor that I'm looking for, a little bit more bready, earthy, and spicy, which I think is going to work really well with the pumpkin pie aspects of this beer. And still we're gonna be kicking it with two pounds of flaked oats. That is a critical part of all of my Nipah recipes in order to get that nice, creamy, full, and soft mouthfeel that you're looking for out of a Nipah. The base malts are gonna be a little bit different than usual because I still wanted to bolster it a little bit more with rye. So we're gonna be using half and half, 2.5 pounds of normal rye malt and Belgian pale malt. Additionally, throughout the entire process, we're gonna be hitting it with healthy doses of this delicious pumpkin spice. With all this flaked malt, plus the pumpkin puree, I knew it was gonna be a thick, difficult mash and sparge. So I made sure to lay down an extra amount of rice holes. I went with about two full pounds here, and legitimately, I still don't know if I think it was enough. We decided to add the pumpkin puree into the mash for several reasons. First off, I was afraid if we added it in later steps of the process that I'd have to worry about scorched kettles and too much fallout from the actual particles of the puree. Additionally, I really wanted it to give it that nice, beautiful orange color to the wort. And lastly, that's just kind of how pumpkin ales were traditionally made way, way, way back in the day by chunking huge slabs of pumpkin into the mash tun, so it just seemed fitting to me. So here's where things start getting complicated. I decided that I wanted to really try my hands and do something unique with this beer, so I'm going to do a full volume mash with 7 full gallons, which after absorption ratio should equal out to be about 5.5 gallons of total finished beer. But additionally, we're going to throw a decoction mash into this. So we're going to initially start off by heating the water up to 120 degrees for the initial inoculation of the water. Is that the right word? Inoculation? Addition? Whatever. Now I'm just going to summarize real quick because if I went into the full schedule of a decoction mash, this video would be a hundred hours long. But basically what I do is I periodically pull some unfinished wort from the mash tun, put it into a separate kettle, bring it to a certain elevated temperature, reapply it to the mash tun, which helps create additional starches and additional sugar molecules and everything like that. It just adds a little complexity, a little more flavor, and a little more oomph to your overall finished work before the boil. And you can see it getting progressively milkier and milkier here because it's getting additional starches and additional sugars generated. Decoction mashes are such an interesting and unique process to add to a beer. So now that that's done, let's move on to the boil. And yes, by the way, 
the decoction mash took so long that it went from daylight to nighttime. So, anyways, it's a normal 60 minute boil. Nothing too different or out of the ordinary here. Since it is supposed to be a Nipa inspired ale, all the hop additions are going to go in at the last 10 minutes. We also decided that we wanted to add a little more kick, so we threw some more of that pumpkin spice in there. We had some in the mash, and now we throw some into the last few minutes of the boil, too. So, as I said, it was a pretty uneventful boil. We went ahead and started hitting it with a work chiller and cooling it down to about 70 degrees so that way we could pitch our yeast and get fermentation going. Also, right here I'd like to mention that you can see I am transferring it directly from the boil kettle into the carboy. I usually use a filter between there and there that way I can remove a lot of excess but I got a lot of shit for that in some of my other videos and I just was like you know what let's try it and see what happens. You motherfuckers are about to learn why I like to use a filtration system from the kettle to the carboy when I'm dealing with extremely adjunct heavy beers. The leftover particles from all the flaked grains and all the hops and combined with the trube from all of the yeast that it took to ferment left this beer cut in half. There was so much left over that it was almost impossible to get the beer out of the carboy without being sludged down. This is a true horror story. Anyways, all that gunk and bullshit down at the bottom of the carboy absolutely in no way deterred us from adding more stuff to it. So, of course, we hit it with some more hops for a delicious, nice, aromatic dry hop. And again, we hit it with even more pumpkin spice to really reinforce that pumpkin pie flavor. We then moved on to the scariest part of any brew process. And that's bottling day. And yes, it was an absolute nightmare to be able to try to get all that sludge and transfer it into beer. We basically had to put it through a filtration siphon and basically spill spoon it until the juice was able to come down and by juice I mean beer needless to say it was a total shit show despite all of our difficulties we were still able to get a surprisingly decent yield almost 50 percent of what I would normally get out of a five gallon batch which I mean in all honesty you saw how much true but nastiness was in there I chalked that up as a win Good God. It's like fucking sauce, bro. Uh. <laughs> it's like sauce. But through all the hardship and all the struggle, I honestly 100% legitimately do believe that we ended up getting way more treat than we did trick. Yes, it was complicated. Yes, there were mistakes. Maybe I should not have used more flaked grain than I did per percentage of base malt. Maybe I should have utilized the pumpkin puree in a different way so that it didn't completely clog up and bog down the fermentation cycle as it did, which is my belief of what caused all the pulpy, plumpy mess. But it did end up looking good. It looked like a Nipa. It tasted like a beautiful Nipa and really encouraged me to try more pumpkin spice Nipas in the future because the beautiful mixture of the cinnamon and the nutmeg worked so perfectly with the bitterness and the spiciness of the hop choice that we made. So yes, a bit of a shit show, I will not deny that, but a beautiful shit show it was. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and everybody out there, have a happy Halloween.